Well, welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday, the 9th of December. I want to do a bit of an Omicron update. Still reasonably optimistic, but let's let's go into some detail straight away on this. Now, this one is the uh, Louise Restaurant Bar and uh, the night of the 26th of November. So this is Oslo and it's a Christmas party. Pretty early Christmas party, I would say, but nevertheless. Uh, Scartex Solar Power Company. One or two return travellers from South Africa. There was actually two travellers returned from South Africa. Only one of them turned out to be positive, though, for SARS coronavirus too. Had returned a few days earlier, so had been knocking around as normal in Norway after his return, where there was fairly limited restrictions, actually, at that time. Now, there's 120 people went to this party. 120, all doubly vaccinated from the, from the Santec um, Solar Power Company group. And they, uh, they had their own Christmas dinner and everything. Then about half 11 when there was a, it was a bit later on, they started mingling with people outside later on from uh, other guests from the hotel. Now, there were 70 of the 120 tested positive the day after, or, or in the days after, and 50 others from the hotel as well. So that's a total of 120 people testing positive. So 120 in the original uh, company group, 70 of those tested positive. But they also uh, infected 50 others in the hotel at the same at the, at the same in the same evening. The 26th of November, by the way, was the evening or well, the 26th of November was the day where the World Health Organization named the Omicron variant as a variant of concern. Half have tested positive for Omicron. Well, it's more than half, as we said, it's 70, 70 out of the 120. 13 have been confirmed with sequencing. The others are assumed to be Omicron from the um, from the S gene dropout that we know about. So it looks like most of those are, are in fact, uh, Omicron variant. Uh, Dr. Tini Ravo, Ravlo, Oslo Infectious Diseases, they have symptoms like fever, cough, headache, muscle pain, fatigue. Interesting. So... They have got symptoms, as quite a lot of people are symptomatic in the group. Um, but uh, but now, and this was as of yesterday, actually, this was yesterday's report, uh, none of them have become severely ill and none of them have been treated in hospital. So of the 120, uh, so far zero have become, uh, zero have become ill, which is, uh, is encouraging. And this is actually uh, this is actually uh, 15 days ago now, I think. So the time is ticking on. So uh, the next day, one of the two employees recently returned from South Africa, tested positive, and then the other ones were found as well. Now, Norway's state epidemiologist, Fraud Freudland, uh, sheer number of people infected at a single event, Omicron considerably more infectious than the Delta. So the sheer number of people that are infected, 120 people are altogether infected in that one evening, uh, shows that this is a highly transmissible variant the omicron is more transmissible than the delta and when we look at what happened to norway this is really quite telling as well where are we there we are um so this is norway throughout the pandemic so pretty low cases what we might call first second and third wave in norway but but low numbers all the way through really until we get to the end here where we see uh, this sudden increase here and it looks like a lot of this is now Omicron driven. So way more numbers in Norway than there ever have been, probably originating, many of them originating in that in that particular party. Uh, so th this, this Professor Forlander, Nor Norwegian Institute of Public Health, he says there's one of, one of the three scenarios for Omicron is that it will be both very mild and very transmissible. So that was a possibility. And he says that is the hope, that is the best scenario we can have. That it's getting uh, that says milder, but it should be it should, that should be getting milder. That most people will get it. Most people, probably just about everyone, is going to get it, and they will get a natural immunity. So the professor here here is clearly saying that this will be associated with a natural immunity, which of course is absolutely brilliant if it's minimal it's symptomatic disease. It might be that it is now replicated and mutated so many times that this is the optimal position from the virus's point of view to spread widely and not kill the host. So what the virus wants to do is to reproduce as much as possible. And if it goes around killing people, it's going to reproduce less because if it kills someone, um, it's not going to carry on 
reproducing from that person. So it's natural that viruses do evolve to become milder. It looks like this process has been accelerated, as we saw yesterday when we said Omicron caught a cold. In other words, it got a particular genetic sequence from a common cold coronavirus. And the professor in Norway goes on to say, um, <clears throat> that's what we've seen with other diseases beforehand. So this is a pattern he's familiar with. And of course, it then gets into more like a, an endemic phase. And uh, this is me speaking. So this is not the end because we know it's not the end because there's still a lot of Delta going on in the world and uh, the Delta is not finished yet. But but I've said here, nor is it the end of the beginning, because I think we're past the beginning. We're past the end of the beginning. And I think really this, this could well be the beginning of the end. So if you'll excuse, excuse the melodrama there, I think that's probably roughly where we are at. But it's not it's not to the end yet. And I want to tell you why there's things I'm still concerned about. So Delta is still ravaging many, many countries. So here we have the uh, new daily confirmed COVID cases per, uh, per, per million people. And we go look at Japan, where the numbers are very low and India, the numbers are still pretty low. Uh, Australia, Canada, South Africa has increased, of course, and we know this is all Omicron in South Africa. The United States quite high but we still believe that's mostly delta but causing quite a lot of hospitalization in, in the hospitalizations in the states that's the united kingdom there we see norway presumably delta uh, presumably omicron driven has overtaken the united kingdom but of course we are getting daily more and more omicron cases in the united kingdom denmark we know there's quite a lot of omicron and ireland it's quite unclear why the cases are so high at the moment in Ireland so that so that's the sort of demographic uh, not demographic but the, the incidence at the moment or prevalence at the moment a number of new COVID patients in hospital per million which is probably the most important this is the data that we have so Denmark we do see an increase Norway the numbers are are, are low there's a few days data missing but the numbers are still low um, United Kingdom, higher Ireland, higher United States. We know that in some areas of the states, hospitals are under quite a lot of pressure actually at the moment, although it is patchy around the country. Deaths, well, the United States deaths remain stubbornly high, unfortunately, and indeed have gone up quite a lot with this current uh, Delta increase. Ireland, the deaths have gone up as well. United Kingdom, Denmark, Norway, thankfully low. Canada, India, South Africa, Australia, Japan. So they're the deaths at the moment. And what else have we got here? This is the estimated reproduction rate. So this is the R1 here. This line here is 1. So below this, it's getting less. Above that, it's getting more. And we see the only country where cases are still reducing is Japan. Uh, Denmark, which has Omicron, is increasing. The United Kingdom, which has Omicron and Delta, is increasing. Ireland, we don't have genomic data. Canada, United States, Norway, which is probably largely Omicron driven, is increasing. And South Africa, which we know is pretty well entirely Omicron driven, well, is entirely virtually over 90% Omicron driven. Very high rate of increase uh, indeed, well over uh, an, R an R value of over two. Now, this is a bit out of date. South Africa is over 90% now. United States, that's probably about the latest we've got. Uh, India, Japan... Um, Australia, Canada, Norway, we believe that Omicron is much higher than this, but we don't have the firm data yet. Denmark, we believe it's much higher than that, but we don't have the firm data yet. United Kingdom, it will be higher than this, but again, not firm data yet. And Ireland, uh, uh, sadly, somewhat lagging behind in terms of, um, in terms of, of profiling. And uh, Moving age case fatality rates, so so the people dying per number of cases. India is quite high at the moment, which is, is sad to see. But uh, looking at the other countries, so countries where there's more Omicron, like Denmark and Norway, very low figures. Um, Ireland, not so many people dying. United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, uh, Japan. Uh, that's actually the United States uh, there because these are all sort of compressed down a bit. That, that gives you the order. So countries where there's a lot of Omicron spreading, like South Africa, the death rate is actually pretty low in South Africa. So this is the South Africa line here. And we see that the death rate has actually come down as Omicron has increased. And of course, this is this is really remarkably encouraging that we're hoping Omicron is going to be very, very mild. 
Now, um, we talked about the clinical features of, of Omicron yesterday from Dr. Uh, Kotsia in, in, in South Africa. Um, and we've had some um, interesting uh, communications from you as well. Uh, Sally reported, um, I've had Delta this time last year, pretty rough, took six months to recover. Really, Sally, that is, that is a long time. It just shows it can be a long time. And I, I have Omicron now. The symptoms of Omicron are as you state, which we'll go over in a minute. And she is uh, vaccinated. So it looks like these symptoms are being consistent. Hellgard in, in, in Gautang in, in, uh, in South Africa, in, in the epicentre. Uh, have tested positive two days ago. The symptoms is 100% correct, as stated. Uh, also, after first symptoms, three days, and I don't even know that I was sick. So symptoms only lasting, feeling better after three days. So Sally and Helgard both confirming the symptoms of Omicron uh, because they're both uh, Omicron positive. And let's just look at what these are. The symptoms that we know so far are... Um, Muscle aches and pains, so achiness, headache, tiredness which lasts to one or two days, slightly sore throat, no cough and no runny nose. So we are getting sort of collaboration that these do seem to be the main symptoms that are present and these ones do seem to be the ones that are absent. We'll get much more data on that once Tim, once Tim Spector gets going, of course, he's, he's the best at getting the data on this. Um, but let's look at um, let's look at some South Africa data now, because South Africa, as we've said, really is the uh, really is the sentinel on this. Now, this first slide from South Africa is the uh, the number of hospital admissions. And we are seeing an increase in the last couple of weeks. This data week here, week 49 is not yet uh, complete. So we are seeing some increase in hospitalizations in South Africa. Now, this doesn't tell us why these patients are admitted but it does tell us there's been an increase in hospitalizations although not a dramatic one it has to be said compared to where we were uh, in, earlier in the year now this is current uh, ward uh, th these are patients in the wards in south africa uh, 4.8 so 4800 people actually in hospital and these are people that have been um, diagnosed with SARS coronavirus too. We know in South Africa it's basically all Omicron now. Not necessarily because they're in hospital for SARS coronavirus too. In fact, most of them were just discovered to be SARS coronavirus too positive, incidentally, because everyone going to hospital gets tested. So um, they're the number of people. So currently, um, th th these are in intensive care. Um, these are in high care and uh, these are on the general ward. And this is for the whole 40 million population of South Africa, patients in hospital with uh, COVID-19 or corona, SARS coronavirus 2 positivity at the moment. And this shows the intervention. So there's 148 people that are positive in South Africa that are being ventilated and 662 for the whole country that are receiving oxygen. So we see a continued very low rate of oxygen requirement and this was live as of about an hour ago this is from the live reference which i'll give you um, so very few people being oxygenated requiring oxygen in south africa who were hospitalized with sars coronavirus 2 confirmed infection and of course this is this is omicron infection so th 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 this remains this remains encouraging now this is the number of uh, deaths in south africa um this is for the uh th th these are these are the weeks so this is uh 2021 this is halfway through the year week 25 deaths went down quite nicely and we see that so far is there an increase well in in that week there was 102 up from 55 so there is a slight increase a slight increase and this shows the weekly reported deaths in south africa altogether and this actually is the most um, concerning slide I'm showing today. Um, it does actually show that there is an increase in overall deaths in South Africa. Now, it doesn't tell us why this increase is there, but that's above the, uh, the upper and lower average for the time of year. So there is a slight increase in deaths in South Africa. But as I say, we don't know why that is. We just know that it is the case at the moment. And this shows the way that Delta's taken over in, in South Africa. So, sorry, that's Delta taken over there. This is the, shows the way that Omicron's taken 
over. So first of all, we had Beta, which was the original South Africa variant here. And that was outcompeted by Delta. And now Delta is being outcompeted by Omicron. So that's the, the pattern in South Africa at the moment. And we see that virtually everyone at the moment who is positive in South Africa is coming up positive for Omicron, having replaced Delta. And this is an important point. The, 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 the Omicron from South Africa is replacing Delta. It's not as well as, it's instead of. So here's all the references we've just looked at uh, there. So do, do click on those for yourself, just check them out. Uh, they're all there, a click away. Now, Sir Patrick Vallant, speaking in from Downing Street uh, yesterday, uh, Chief Scientific Officer for the UK, um, from pandemic to endemic, where this becomes a more regular infection like flu over time. So there's a move, he's seeing this move to becoming more uh, endemic. So that is good. This virus has mutated a lot quickly and that is sort of what you would expect at this stage so this, again this is consistent with his experience the good news is that so far and again of course he's hedging his bets here as we all are but I, i'm i'm quite optimistic it looks as though when you get very high antibody levels with the booster vaccine it's definitely having some effect against it in laboratory study so he, he's seeing that saying that the booster vaccine works there which we looked at data for that yesterday but I'm also optimistic, which is not really commenting on, is that, that people aren't getting sick. But he's not. He's keeping his powder dry on that at the moment. Boris Johnson is in uh, British Prime Minister. So again, working from home on Monday. This is the so-called Plan B. Or aspects of the Plan B are now being implemented to prevent spread. Work from home on Monday. Face masks in public venues. Uh, Covid mandates for passes for nightclubs and other crowded areas, daily testing instead of isolation for Omicron variants. So here we can see that they're expecting so many Omicron contacts that they've gone over to um, to um, daily testing as opposed to isolation because it means that no one will be available to go to work. So it's looking like, apart from that slight increase in the overall deaths in South Africa, it is looking remarkably promising for Omicron being a very mild disease and the Omicron should replace Delta as Delta replaced um, Alpha, um, and, and, and as, as Delta replaced Alpha in, in the UK, and as, as Delta replaced Beta in, in South Africa, which was called, originally called the South Africa variant. So um, we see that clear evolution in South Africa, which is really, really quite encouraging. So it could be that the, uh, the pandemic is, is well and truly on its way out in terms of causing people to get sick. If it is that the um, the Omicron variant continues not to make people sick. The big proviso is, of course, it can be sometimes two, three or four weeks before people get sick. But we're not seeing it yet, apart from this slight increase in deaths in South Africa. But as I say, we don't know why there's an increase in deaths in hospitalizations in South Africa, even though they're not marked. We do know that most of the cases of SARS coronavirus 2 positivity in hospitals in South Africa have been incidental findings. So still fairly frustrating, still on tenterhooks, really, seeing how this is going to go. But it's looking it is looking promising. Now, um, I'm just going to do a quick uh, talk about this uh, plant based coronavirus vaccine from Canada. Uh, GlaxoSmithKline and uh, Med Med Medicago. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, primary endpoints and secondary endpoints in the trial uh, have been met, and the, the trial here is dominated in the variants phase. Now it's not it's pre Omicron days, but it's post wild type virus days. So this is invariant days, presumably alpha, uh, beta, and delta waves. This was mostly trialed in. Efficacy demonstrated against all variants seen in the study. So this seems to be. This particular vaccine seems to be working against all variants. 75.3 efficacy in COVID-19 of any severity caused by the Delta variant. So looking good for the Delta variant. Now, it's so interesting this because it's a plant, it's plant, it's brewed up in plant cells, which is fascinating. Vaccine candidate was well tolerated with no serious uh, related serious events reported in the vaccine group. 24,000 adults. Again, phase three placebo controlled trial. And, and th this is this is the, the Canadian plant-based vaccine. Now, this is the fir world's first ever 
vaccine where the uh, the antigen is actually brewed up in plant cells. This is just absolutely a, a brilliant uh, a br brilliant step forward for vegetarians and vegans and probably for, for the entire world as well um, because it's brewed upon potato cells and corn cells. It's a, It really is a major new way to, to make vaccines. And the Br British GlaxoSmithKline pandemic ad adjuvant is going in it. Now, the adjuvant is something which increases the the, the immune reaction to the uh, to the vaccine, to the actual antigen. So in other words, uh, the Canadian group are producing the antigen, which is the bit that the, the human immune system will actually recognise as being foreign, and the adjuvant is making the antigen more antigenic, if you like, generating a better immune response. Brian Ward, medical officer at uh, Medicago, Medicago um, plants that are used simply as uh, bioreactors to produce the antigen. So they, they, they produce in uh, bioreactors with plant cells. Health Canada, US FDA, UK Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency and the World Health Organization have all been approached for approval. Um, so interesting what will happen there. World Health Organization point out produced cheaply in very high amounts. Uh, carrier plants such as potatoes and corn antigen created are fridge stable so the antigen is the actual vaccine the part the part of the vaccine that the immune system will recognize as being foreign fridge stable so you can ship it all around the world in a normal ice box can be stored for long periods of time don't know how long probably talking months likelihood that a plant virus will get in the way is minimal so that is good because plant viruses don't generally affect I don't, I don't, I've never heard of a plant virus infecting any animal, actually. V vets and botanists out there, correct me by all means, but I've never heard of a, a plant virus jumping to an animal. Uh, Virus-like particles for uh, protein vaccines. So they're producing virus-like particles, but, but they're empty shells with no RNA. So we're going to end up with something that's kind of, I don't know what it's like yet, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like a bit like a... It won't be shaped like the virus. It'll have the proteins, the same protein constituents, I would imagine. But of course, there's no RNA inside it, so it's not, it's not transmissible. It's not going to make the person sick. So keep an eye on that. But plant plant based vaccines, wow, that really is a new thing. It's not new. It's it's been on the go for they've been developing it for about twenty years. It's just sort of come to fruition at the right time. And then finally, Sally, who we saw had typical symptoms before, asked this question. Can you explain how one variant replaces another? Uh, does the other variant just fade out? Um, so can you replay, explain? So the in, in this case, the Omicron variant uh, is more transmissible, more able to survive, more likely to reproduce than the Delta variant. So it simply outcompetes it. This is natural evolution. It's the survival of the fittest and the less fit and in this case, thankfully, very, very thankfully, the less fit variant is the Delta variant. So it's, sim it's, it's it is simply outcompeted by a fitter variant. Does the other variant just fade out? Well, it goes away, but it doesn't fade out. It's outcompeted. It it is it is denied the etiological niches. That is in you and me. It is denied the etiological niches in which to reproduce. So it has nowhere to reproduce, so it dies out. Yeah, it, do, it does fade out. It's outcompeted, in this case, by the Omicron variant. So it's a simple Darwinian um, survival of the fittest situation. So, And as we saw in that graphic, basically there's no Delta reproducing now in South Africa. It's all Omicron, and that is my hope for the world. Um, it re We really are, you know, uh, you know, the next couple of weeks is going to be pretty tense pretty tense and uh but so far it's looking like omicron could be um our way out of this pandemic not human beings being clever it's just the natural evolution of the viruses so uh cause for human humility there i think so i remain optimistic we're going to report on this till, we, till we've got something definite and uh but it really is it really is so far so good um oh just before i go um we we, have, we um put the thing on yesterday for free downloads of the of the books uh, my, my, my books <clears throat> lots of people have done that and i was actually talking to my um th these are free in pdfs of course um 
I was talking to a technician about it, and he says that he thinks that since the middle of last year, we've downloaded about 90,000 copies. So um, I'm just so pleased. You know, you sit there, you know, write, write, writing books, and, you know, your whole life ends up going into these flipping books. It takes ages, and, and, and sometimes you, you, you'll, you'll spend all day writing, you think, oh, you know, I'm really tired after a day's writing. Do you think anyone is ever going to read this? <laughs> And the idea that 90,000 people have downloaded it and, and hopefully are reading it really is um, it, it really is great justification for all the uh, all the happy days. <laughs> well, they weren't that bad, but all, 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 the, all the days I spent writing these two books and there were quite a few of them. So absolutely delighted they're, they're being read and uh, hopefully the diagrams are being uh, coloured in and uh, all that kind of thing. So I, I drew all the diagrams. I'm not artistic, but I just... Um, I just sort of can draw simple diagrams like that and uh, put the labels on and kind of explains hopefully what's going on. So um, free downloads, help yourselves, and uh, let's get to a hundred thousand. That would be that would be brilliant. Okay, thank you for watching.